Hi, greetings from the cloudy St. Petersburg. My name is Dmitry Gudov. I write Ruby by day, Emacs list by night when I uh, don't do anything else. And uh, you might know my work from a number of third party packages as well as built in ones. Uh, the idea for this talk came out from uh, an improvement request for the performance of grep like. Uh, commands using the xref interface and its storage um, types, container types uh, for the search results. Complaining that uh, it's not uh, as fast as it potentially could have been um, when there are lots of lots of search results coming for a given search. And I have noticed myself that uh, when uh, working on it, and probably before, that my uh, approach to optimizing a Lisp code is uh, has changed recently, ish. And I'd like to talk about it here. Uh, this talk is for people who already know how to write uh, some Emacs Lisp to solve their problems and uh, have who have possibly uh, encountered some performance issues uh, doing that. Also, if you want to contribute some improvements to the code that is already in Emacs or uh, to others, uh, other packages which are owned by somebody else, it's uh, also it should also be helpful. So uh, let's uh, start. Uh, first of all, about Emacs and Emacs. Lit. It's not uh, the fastest language. Uh, it's uh, let's switch to the to the notes. I hope the the font is big enough to be readable on this video. Really hope so. Uh, so, Emacs Lisp uh, is not the fastest of the bunch. The garbage collector uh, creates pauses whenever it needs to sweep uh, data. Uh, the interpreter is not the fastest one, uh, even though the native compilation branch uh, is improving on that for by like twice in certain uh, scenarios, which is, which is good. And uh, the standard library or uh, functions for working with collections, for example, are not uh, uniformly great. So there is some work to be done there. Maybe you can contribute the next improvement in there. And also, if your code, your package uh, uh, displays stuff, it has a visual component, then you might have to deal with some uh, drawbacks of the display engine, uh, which uh, might slow to a crawl when your code has... Uh, when you're trying to display uh, lines which uh, are a little too long, trying to print them, for example, or you are using a lot of overlays, if you know what it is, uh, with lots of overlays on the same visual line in particular. But, okay, uh, the first thing to understand and uh, hope uh, everybody who's done ha some programming in the past knows it's first you uh, write, write correctly and then you try to benchmark and see the, where the problems are if there are any. So first do it right, then do it fast. How do we uh, find uh, the hotspots the bottlenecks on the second step, we try to do some profiling or measuring of how long the code takes. Emacs has 
uh, two different profilers. One is the native profiler, which, as I recall, was uh, contributed by Tomohiro Matsuyama, the author of the autocomplete package back in Emacs 24.3, apparently. It's a low overhead profiler, it's sampling, uh, which is good on one hand, but might be less good on the other hand. Let's try using it. So we start with profile profiler start. Let's just ask for CPU profiling here, but it also can profile memory allocations. And let's uh, try a uh, search for some string in the current project. Let's do it a few times, oh, maybe three times, so the profiler has more data to work with. And let's call the report. Okay, so here we have the tree, uh, the execution tree, with uh, percentages of the time spent in each function. You can unwrap it uh, by going up and down and pressing tab to unwrap every element. Weird. And okay, here we see that the actual command that was called only takes like 8% of the whole runtime, meaning uh, the input was. Uh, the command took not uh, enough time for us to really dig into it. Let's try a longer, shorter input for with more matches. So, profiler start again, CPU. Let's search for list. Don't mind the mini buffer just yet. See? Okay, so let's look at the report. We can unwrap it here and we see okay 52% of the time was spent doing this at least according to the profile. We can unwrap it, see the description of any function that was called by hitting D or even jump to it by tapping F and uh, by going down the stream we unwrap it with tab you can see the where the time was spent one of the big bigger drawbacks of this uh, profiler is mm, the arithmetics don't often don't, don't, don't always um, work out like you might have this is not a good example but okay you have 14 percent spent in here but when we uh, expand this entry we only see like six three and none the difference some is sometimes even bigger than that so um the native profiler can give an accurate picture and it has little overhead but uh, the uh, specific numbers are not uh, very precise because it's well, the principle is probabilistic. Let's stop it here. Okay, there is another package called ELP uh, Emacs the Lisp profiler, which uh, is much older than that. Uh, okay, but it uh, allows us to instrument just specific functions or a package, and uh, we're uh, instrumenting the XRF package here, and uh, it works 
through a device. Like you can see the description of the one of the functions in the package, and we see that it has had um, a raw device added. If we run the same search, we can see the one finishes the uh, table of. Uh, all the numbers uh, that every function in the package has been called and uh, the times uh, which uh, the runtime has spent inside of, the, of them uh, sorted by impact as it understands them. The main problem uh, with uh, this profiler is it is slower because it adds uh, an overhead for to every function call so it uh, in the end might give an impression that uh, functions with lots of calls which uh, have been called a lot of times uh, are more important, more uh, hotter than they actually are because uh, it slows down every such function call, including the subsequent calls that uh, these functions uh, do inside the same package. So uh, it's a good way to <coughs> analyze and drill down to see which uh, functions here take a lot of time, but uh, just keep it in mind that uh, sometimes you might end up trying to optimize one of these uh, smaller functions, called out, usually smaller, and uh, that uh, the result would not, might not actually affect the production runtime at all. But uh, it's still a, a good tool, especially when you already know which set of functions might uh, you are interested in and m which functions might be slower. Uh, ELP allows you to instrument uh, like a, a package or uh, a set of functions. Just don't forget to uninstrument them all afterwards or else your session and your my subsequent uh, optimization efforts might uh, not work as well as you might want them to work and there's also this very nice very handy package called benchmark which uh, unfortunately not everybody knows about um, and it turns out that a lot of uh, older uh, Emacs Lisp developers, uh, users, uh, package developers, uh, usually have uh, some uh, b benchmarking macros of their own, but uh, uh, there is uh, this package with perfectly usable interface, which uh, don't doesn't require you to define something else, especially when you are in an Emacs Q capital session, trying to benchmark your code in a very uh, Emacs. So it has uh, two uh, main endpoints, I would say. First one is benchmark, the benchmark macro, and the second one is benchmark program. Uh, the benchmark is a function and the benchmark program is a macro. The first one we can use mm, by specifying the number of iterations and the form. I hope uh, the mini buffer is, really, is easy to read here. For instance, uh, we can take this long list and try inversing it and we see what how long that takes, and then you can you know, do it, do it ju ju just the inner code, and then basically compare. 
to figure out how much in, how long in reverse takes in this scenario. Or we can take a function which we have probably found uh, using one of the previous methods, which uh, we anticipate that it, as we understand, it takes a while, and annotate it with a benchmark program forms which uh, take uh, just execute uh, the body and report each and every one of them uh, how long that uh, body execution took. So for instance uh, here we added a few message calls inside those batch programs so we can see uh, how long each part of the function xref dash matches xref matches in files takes when it is run. Let's try it. And let's first call a max list byte compile and load so that we're sure that uh, we are running the fastest possible version of this code. So uh, when we do find the bottlenecks we are sure that they are real and not because of the um, uncompiled code, uh, macro expansion, not uh, and uh, or the lack of some substitutions, uh, other substitutions that uh, our code is relying on but uh, those uh, might not, which not might be uh, which might not be available uh, in the interpreter mode, just in the compiled code. And let's run. So we have this list, search for list. And the remaining time is spent during printing of the results, which we didn't uh, annotate with a benchmarking macro, but it's still there. So we can see by switching to the messages buffer, uh, control H E, that unquoting was very fast. So the search took. Uh, 400 milliseconds, it's uh, slower than uh, it would be without the video being recorded, uh, as well as the rest of the measurements here. So the parsing of the results took more than that, and the object allocation took even more, which uh, is unfortunate, but it's the reality when we're dealing with it. a lot of search results, because well, Emacs Lisp is slower than grep. That's, that's just a given. What uh, can be done and uh, what uh, had been done to improve on this? Well, First of all, let's change the question because this is more of a retrospective sort of talk rather than talking about future plans. What can uh, one do to improve performance? Well, basically, two things. First, you try to make sure that you're running less code then your, your code does fewer things, fewer iterations, uh, fewer operations. Uh, basically, it's uh, the realm of uh, uh, choosing your algorithm well. But make sure it uh, has as little complexity as you can manage. 
reasonably. And another is to try to reduce uh, memory allocations. It's uh, creating uh, consoles, the, the, the links of the list of the lists. If you are mapping through a list, creating a new one, you are creating consoles. Oh, new objects memory anyway. And also when you call uh, string operations like substring when you create new strings uh, that's also what you do when you allocate new memory that uh, triggers garbage collections later which um, affect uh, the performance of your code uh, quite severely um, uh, I have found that uh, Actually, it, uh, contrary to my personal intuition, when you try to fine-tune the code working on long um, lists of elements, long, long collections, large collections, it's e even more important to try to avoid or reduce uh, memory allocations rather than try to ensure that uh, less code is uh, running, L less operations are performed. Because uh, the garbage collector have <coughs> can hit you in the posterior quite suddenly. Uh, you will not uh, always... Uh, when you measure the impact, impact you uh, might not always measure the whole of it. And uh, sometimes, even when you have uh, uh, like a few operations, you can measure all three of them. But at some point, if you just reduce, uh, remove uh, most of the locations, all three of them, the improvement might be even bigger than the total of three improvement, which you have. Uh, might have measured previously uh, like separately so it's uh, something to be on the lookout for but of course uh, when you uh, pick the algorithm it's uh, important not to do more operations than you have to And we uh, have uh, examples of both in the recent uh, changes to the XREF and project packages, which uh, we can uh, examine here. Let's look at, take a look at this one. This uh, commit message lies a little bit because um, it's referring to the use of a source instead of CL source. And the actual change uh, incorporates that, but uh, it also incorporates the <laughs> second part of the sentence, which actually replaced the use of a source in there. Curiously, source was pretty slow because not only it uh, created quadratic uh, complexity in the operation it was also calling the list function assoc for every iteration whereas if we just use assoc there which was the first version of this uh, change of the improvement it became already much faster but then switching to a hash table which turned this lookup from um, O of N complexity into well, amortized constant one, even better. So use hash tables, kids. Another commit here is about using the inhibit modification hooks. So, 
Turns out when you're printing into a buffer, even you have if you have already disabled the undo history, binding this variable to a non-nil value is pretty good because uh, you are able to avoid running number of hooks, which improves performance. Next. Uh, this one was about moving the file remote call from inside the loop. And uh, this function is actually surprisingly slow-ish for the goal uh, for its purpose. So you, you don't really want to call it on uh, every file name in the list when you have a lot of them. Uh, and especially if you uh, your code is running on a, in a buffer visiting a remote file, like through tram, um, you might end up trying to devise different approaches to avoid checking whether every file name is remote if you're dealing with a list of file names. So, this one, take a look, uh, be, be careful with it. Uh, similar uh, slower functions uh, with current buffer, but not, not, not so much, so it all depends on really how often you call it. Sometimes you might want to rewrite your code that it's called less often and expand file name which hits the disk so if you're dealing with file names you might want to replace it with concatenation at certain points okay back to these changes uh, later Okay, this one just removed uh, allocation of a cons per match hit and still it uh, brought like 5% uh, or something like that improvement uh, to the whole uh, command. So that's a pretty significant improvement for a small change like that. Similarly, here we just made sure to avoid a split, no, a substring call, and probably an allocation of the whole uh, buffer string. But uh, in my uh, testing, that doesn't actually matter much, at least so much. But a substring call per uh, result, if we uh, sin since we changed to uh, manual parsing of the buffer into strings delimited with uh, zero bytes, it uh, gave an overall improvement of like twenty percent. Again, on my machine with a pretty fast uh, SSD and with the warm disk cache, of course, but still. And going back to this uh, revision, it was actually quite uh, surprising that uh, migration to a CL dev struct from EIEIO, the CL uh, object uh, the system, commonly inspired object system, first uh, introduced in uh, the CDIT tools. That was uh, a bit of a surprise because uh, not much uh, of my uh, benchmark benchmarking actually pointed at uh, it being the problem. Probably because not uh, the, the 
accessors were not the actual problem, like the ORF macros and the, the code accessing the slots, but the construction, the object, object construction code, uh, uh, that was uh, where most of the time was spent unnecessarily. Maybe uh, doing type checking, maybe some other stuff. So if you have uh, lots of values which you need to treat like objects in uh, and do virtual dispatch on them in your package, uh, you might uh, want to look into CLD abstract uh, for them. Going on to the next section, I have prepared a sort of comparison of uh, between CLlib, Dash and Seek, the collection libraries we have uh, available for us in Emacs, at least the popular ones. But since I'm running behind some time, I'd like I'll probably just summarize the findings. Uh, first of all, SIG is nice, but its uh, generic approach is probably quite decent for most of the situations. But uh, there are places where it could be optimized better. So instead of uh, having quadratic performance, it could use a uh, hash table, like for instance, dash does here in dash union, or delete dubs does in its impl implementation. Um, the dash itself is curiously fast, at least faster than I might have expected. Uh, possibly because of the implementation approach, where it um, uses code generation to avoid function calls, at least some of them, which is interesting. But uh, since both uh, seek and dash avoid um, mutations, they don't uh, really have mutating counterparts to common functions like we have with cell remove if, cell delete if, or just cell remove, cell delete. Um, it still uh, can be valuable to look into destructive versions of uh, those functions, uh, something from the core, core library like delete dubs or n reverse for your code when you're really trying to get as close to the metal or whatever as uh, as you can because uh, uh, avoiding extra allocations it can really be useful it can really improve the performance if you don't uh, you know, do a lot of other stuff. And well, delete consecutive dubs is uh, you know, blazing fast, but it only requires pre sorted strings. What else to say? Uh, if uh, you are going to read these measurements, uh, make sure to keep in mind that reverse is not free. So, uh, for instance, if we are looking at this comparison uh, between remove and delete, for instance, uh, they're using reverse to avoid modifying the data, the sample data, so we don't have to create it every time, but uh, to compare how much faster delete is than remove, we need to subtract 787 milliseconds from here and from here. So it comes out to 
like 230 milliseconds in the this example, the last example, and 100 to one second 250 milliseconds here. So the difference is five fold here. No, not not two fold. All right, and um, with this, I'm going to <laughs> thank you for uh, listening, for watching, and I'll be taking questions. Thank you.